everybody, Ali Akbarian from Mobility Engineering, your resident road safety expert, back again for another Q&A video. Thank you very much for sending in those questions. We love those questions. Keep them coming and uh, we'll keep on answering them. And uh, as we always say with my trusty subscribe pillow, please help us get to that thousand subscriber mark. Please hit that button. Don't pause the video, hit the button and come back and, uh, and let's get into it. We want to get to that thousand subscriber mark and we really appreciate it. So send us some love. Okay, so on to today's question. So today's question is fairly straightforward, but it comes up a lot, and we might have even done a couple of videos on this. I know we've done a video on Japanese vehicles and Japanese imports, which is kind of a, an assessment of it. Um, and this is another question around Japanese imported vehicles. So just to quickly kind of explain what the context of this is, it is in Australia, uh, which is where we're located, we are allowed to um, privately import vehicles from other countries if they're a specialist type of vehicles uh, vehicle and and in um, the in Japan uh, companies like Toyota Nissan um, all of those kind of companies Honda the Japanese car companies that we all know and love um, they actually make a small handful of factory converted uh, disability vehicles some of them have like a swivel seat that comes out some of them have like a ramp out the back um, and those vehicles, particularly with NDIS and all of the kind of the growth of this industry in Australia over the last five, ten years, um, those vehicles in terms of their supply and popularity in Australia have gone up like exponentially. So they're, and they're a great option as I've said in my previous videos which we can link below, uh, basically that you know, for, for, for people that, you know, have affordability issues or for certain parts of the market, they are a great product. You know, they do need to have some extra work done onto them most of the time. But generally speaking, if you've got the right fit for the right person, they, they, they're not a bad product, right? But there is one part of it which causes a lot of confusion and is not underst understood by people. These cars, at the end of the day, when they come to Australia, even though they're modified by the factory in Japan, they are still a modified vehicle, right? So, so it's still a modified Toyota. It might be supplied by Toyota that way, but it's still classified as a modified Toyota. And the reason why I explain it that way is because the question that actually has come in is, do we need to have engineers certificates or approvals for the modifications on those Japanese imported vehicles? Because I was, I bought the vehicle off the, off the um, dealership lot and they gave me the registration papers and they said, away I can go, I can drive this car. The answer is, yes, you must have the modifications certified. Whether it's the responsibility of the dealer or whoever you bought it off, that's between you and those guys. I'm not there to sort of get in between that and that's not really part of this Q&A. The Q&A doesn't need to be certified if it's a Jap import. All the modifications in the back of the Jap import vehicle or the swivel seats or the hand controls or whatever they've got, they must be certified. So in New South Wales, which is where we are, you have a scheme where you have third party engineers, so independent engineers, and I'm one of them, and you would go and you have a look at the vehicle and you look at the standards and you do your assessments and calculations and everything you need to do, and then you certify those modifications. So, so in, in other states, uh, for example, in South Australia, um, the government can do, do that. And same with um, in Northern Territory, in WA, you basically take your vehicle to government inspectors and they will, they've got engineers that do it in-house, right? So it just depends on the scheme, but basically every single place that you go around the country, anywhere you are in Australia, if there is one of these privately imported Japanese disability vehicles, Great product, as I said, they do cert they do meet certain uses, uh, but the modifications in there, which is all the stuff that is non-standard and why you've probably bought it, all of that must have a certificate or some kind of approval for it, and it must be noted on your registration paper. If you've got like a Toyota, I don't know, Tarago, what they call Estima um, wheelchair van, and it, your registration papers just says, you know, it's a standard Toyota wheelchair, uh, sorry, it's a standard Toyota Tarago, then they're wrong. And if you have an accident, you may have an insurance problem. So you've got to make sure that your paperwork is right. And the best way is to check with your authorities, check with your local engineers, um, and check on your paperwork that you've got. You'll have clearly some notifications there. There's an engineer certificate, there'll be stuff on file and so on. Um, and if you're ever unsure about this stuff, as we always say, check in with Mobility Engineering. We're always happy to help. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that answers the question. Do modified uh, Japanese vehicles need to have certifications done on their modifications? Yes, they do. So uh, hopefully that helps. Thank you very much for tuning in. Keep those questions coming in. And as we always say, hit that subscribe button down there. And we'll see you next time.